Pivoting, as they say, we're going to go to Ocean County, New Jersey, where a sentencing hearing is scheduled within the hour for defendant Christopher, uh, Christopher Gregor. Remember, he was convicted in June of aggravated manslaughter and endangering the welfare of a child in the April 2021 death of his five-year-old son, uh, Corey, uh, six, six-year-old son, Corey uh, Michelot. Now, Gregor brought his son to the hospital, remember this video, as uh, the kid appeared to lethargic. It was following a nap, he was slurring his words, he was stumbling. Uh, at the hospital, uh, Michelot suffered a seizure during a CT scan, and he died soon after. Now, the six-year-old's death was deemed a homicide after his autopsy revealed blunt force trauma. Keep in mind, the child endangerment charge came into play a month before the six-year-old's death. No, after surveillance footage caught uh, uh, Gregor forcing his son to run on a treadmill, this is a tough video here, uh, at increasing speeds despite his son repeatedly falling, that added to the charge. In addition, Gregor's case, uh, uh, his, his mother, Brianna, she files a wrongful death lawsuit against New Jersey's Department of Child Protection uh, basically saying they failed to investigate the dozens of abuse reports she allegedly filed against the defendant. She even filed an order for emergency custody just days before her son's death. Gregor's sentencing hearing is supposed to happen about 1.30 p.m. Eastern time, and we will take a look live as soon as that happens in the courtroom there. Keep in mind, Gregor faces up to 40 years in prison. That is some serious jail time. For now, let's take a look back at the evidence to get a, a good idea of what some of the aggravating and mitigating circumstances could be in this case. Here's some testimony surrounding the defendant's Google searches following his son's death. Could you please start from the earliest date in S-122 and describe for the jury the information that's there? Sure. Uh, so the first hit in the Safari web browser on this was a search conducted on March 25th, 2021 at 9.36, 31 p.m. Uh, the body of the search states, will red marks turn into bruises? And could you please move on to the next one? <clears throat> sure. Uh, the next search is on April 1st, 2021 at 8.43, p.m. Uh, the search was Neptune, not emergency police. The next one. Uh, next search is on April 1st, 2021 at 8.49.05 p.m. Uh, the message, or the search was Jersey Shore Medical Center. Please move on to the next one. The next one is a uh, web history on April 2nd, 2021 at 3.08.37 p.m. Uh, the search was lost consciousness, sleepy and nauseous dash Google search. Please move on to the next one. Next entry is April 2nd, 2021 at 6, 10, 22 p.m. Uh, the search was, can your phone be tracked in airplane mode? The next one. The next search was for our April 2nd, 2021 at 6, 10, 35 p.m. for, can my car be tracked? The next one. The next search is on April 3rd, 2021 at 3, 14, 24 p.m. The search is, what causes a rise in blood sugar in white blood cells? The next one. Gotta rip your staple. Can't see the time. Uh, next search was uh, for April 3rd, 2021 at 355 40 p.m. Uh, the search is could internal bleeding raise your blood sugar levels? Please move on to the next one. The next search is on April 3rd, 2021 at 356 55 p.m. The search is how does gastrointestinal bleeding happen? Could you please move on to the next one? The next search is on April 3rd, 2021 at 4.28.21 p.m. Uh, the search is, how does gastrointestinal bleeding, how pong to die? It's P-O-N-G, to die. Could you please move on to the next one? Sure. Uh, the next search is April 3rd, 2021 at 6.55.22 p.m. The search is, can a GI bleed be slow? Can you please move on to the next one. The next search is going to be on April 4th, 2021. Uh, the value is McGee Tyson Airport, parentheses, TYS, and parentheses, comma, 2055 Alcoa Highway, Alcoa, Tennessee, 37701. Uh, uh, positions, parentheses, 35.0810, 
33 comma dash 83 dot 993889. Is there a next one? There is. Could you please tell us what it is? Uh, next search was on April 4th, 2021 at 9.58.03 a.m. The search was, there was a murder determined from, an, excuse me, there was a murder determined from an autopsy. How long to file charges? Is there another one? Uh, the last one is on April 4th, 2021 at 10.21.16 a.m. Uh, the search was, how long after an autopsy to file charges get filed? Searches, you got to be careful. Here's some more testimony describing the defense location in the days after his son's death. Can you tell us between the second and the third where it, where it was located? I can. Okay, where was it? So, I mean, I'm second, the phone's seen leaving New Jersey. I believe it goes into Pennsylvania, it starts traveling southwest, and it makes it to um, about the southwest, approximately southwest corner of Arkansas, about 45 minutes from the Texas border. Okay, and that was the second to the third, am I right? That's, uh, well, it's second and the third. Second and the third? Yes. Okay. Now, do you have the ability, if I had asked you, mm -hmm. for the third and the fourth? I do. Okay. And did you actually look at that last night? I did. Okay. And did you, when you looked at it, did you make any observations as to <clears throat> the location of the cell phone between the third and the fourth? I did. Okay. And what was that? Sure. So um, the cell phone can be seen turning around at approximately 2.45. You can see it getting off the off-ramp. I believe it was Highway 371 and Route 30 in Arkansas. You see it get on the off-ramp, go around, and start going northeast from that point. And um, to put Arkansas into perspective, it's about four hours to go from the southwest corner of Arkansas to the northeast corner where uh, the phone went. So, or say from Memphis, Tennessee, which is the southwest corner of Tennessee, to Arcana, Texas, which is the southwest, uh, the northeast corner of Texas, where it hits the Arkansas border, is approximately four hours. So the device was 45 <coughs> minutes, approximately, from the Texas border. It can be seen going back towards Memphis at that point. Uh, it arrived in Memphis, Tennessee at approximately 5.50 p.m. Uh, the phone can continue to be tracked until it gets to about Nashville area around 9 p.m. Um, it looks like Mr. Gray gets off in Nashville for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Um, as the device continues to move. He just gets off the main highway, uh, at which point gets back on the main highway and then stops at approximately, uh, I believe it was 9.50 p.m. He stops on the eastern side of Nashville, past the airport, uh, for approximately one hour and 15 minutes. Um, from that point, he then uh, drives from that section to uh, quality Inn motel in, I believe it's Gordonsville, Tennessee, and stops there at around 11.45 at night. And after that, do you see it again? Sure. Uh, and then on the 4th, it picks up, he leaves the motel, or Quality Inn hotel, at approximately 9.45 a.m. and arrives at the um, airport in uh, Alcoa, Tennessee, at approximately 11.15. So he effectively does a U-turn in Texarkana, Arkansas, and heads back towards the Northeast. He does. Okay, a lot going on there. We're not sure what the jury may or may not have focused on, texts uh, and searches, that is, before the death of the child, which was on April 2nd, 2021, searches after, and then this apparent trip that was taken uh, at or about the time of the, the child uh, had to be taken to the hospital. So let's break this down here as we wait again for the actual sentencing to take place. And it is, uh, the top charge was the, uh, the finding by this jury, so could be life in prison. So with me, uh, Catherine Lazardo still here. And joining the firm, Eric Faddis, he is a criminal defense attorney. Good to have you both along. I appreciate it. Catherine, um, you know, we're not sure what the jury was looking at, but give me your opinion as to what, what kind of evidence made the biggest impact when they went with the top charge here. Well, the biggest impact is definitely the video of the treadmill abuse that happened to Corey. Uh, people who were in the courthouse were reporting that some of the people watching had to actually get up and leave the courtroom because it was so emotional and difficult to watch. So that's the video that, that the jury saw of Corey falling down six times and being bitten on the head by his father as 
as the defendant was trying to increase the speed of the treadmill. That happened a few weeks. I, it, that happened in March, and uh, Corey passed away on April 2nd. Uh, so it's such a short time. And you mentioned how Brianna, his mom, has actually filed complaints uh, for child abuse against the defendant for the 20 months that uh, that Corey was with her father. Let's remember, too, that the reason he found out he was the father was because Brianna, the mom, sued him for child support. And so that precipitated the defendant having uh, custody of Corey, sadly. Yeah, that video of the uh, treadmill is brutal. And uh, that was a separate charge. Easy call for the jury, I think. Hey, Eric, stand by. I want you to take a look at this. Uh, the defendant's father testified about his son's behavior after his son's death. Watch this. On April 2nd, did you hear from Christopher? I did. And about what time did you hear from Christopher? It was sometime after 5. Okay. And where were you at the time? In the car. Okay. And where were you going? Um, my wife had called me. I went home to pick her up. And uh, we were heading down to Barnegat. And can you please describe the conversation you had with Christopher, that first conversation? The first conversation is when I took the phone from my wife. Um, Christopher was on the phone with her. I could hear it was loud uh, and very excitable. And I asked her to give me the phone, and then I got the phone. Okay. What was Christopher's demeanor during that conversation? Hysterical. Um, when's the next time you heard from Christopher? A few months later. Okay. And describe that conversation. It was the same. It was, he was inconsolable. He just lost his son. Um, when's the next time you heard from Christopher after that? Did you call him or he called you? I think there was a call right before 5.30, a relatively short call. I, I, I forget if he generated or I did. Okay. And after that, when's the next time you heard from your son? The next day, sometime after noon. I think it was after one, actually. Okay, so that would be April 3rd? It would be. Okay. And what, if anything, did you discuss with your son? I discussed, one, where, where was he? Um, and then I discussed, you, 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 you got to back, be back here. Um, we were distraught. Um, told him to come home. Okay. And did there come a time that you rented a car for him? I did. Okay. And why did you rent a car, if you know? I do. Um, he was uh, stopped in Tennessee, uh, and his, uh, he had to give up his vehicle uh, and his cell phone. And he was without transportation. Okay. So did you arrange for transportation for your son to come home to New Jersey? We made several calls and located a uh, rental car um, place. And then uh, we had made a call. I don't know who paid for it, but we were involved in trying to secure a vehicle for him. Okay, again, that is the defendant's father. We may hear from him again in the sentencing. We're not quite sure who will be making victim impact statements as we wait for the uh, the fate of Christopher Gregor. Uh, Eric Faddis is here, uh, Catherine Lizardo. Eric, so this guy drops his kid off at the hospital and then bugs out. Uh, you know, I'm, uh, we don't know if the jury latched onto that or not, but that's pretty tough to, to explain away. Yeah, Michael, it's kind of a, a bizarre reaction, not something that, you know, you and I would expect uh, for a, a, a dad who did nothing wrong and is just concerned about their kid. We would expect the dad to stay in close proximity, stay in close communication with medical professionals, get updates, see if he can help, that sort of thing. Here what happens is Mr. Gregory kind of just takes off, skips town. And, and, and I think that not only the jury, but the judge at sentencing might interpret that as consciousness of guilt, that he knew he did something wrong and he was trying to flee. And then when you combine that with the internet searches, that uh, interpretation becomes more compelling. Yeah, you know, this, this sentencing is all, uh, Catherine, about aggravating and mitigating factors. And let's not forget that the guy was offered a, a deal ahead of trial, 30 years, no parole. Uh, he's about to do some second guessing here. W what, what do you expect to hear uh, on the aggravating side? 
the aggravating side is definitely the the abuse that he did to Corey, especially how the jury found him guilty for child endangerment. So the 20 months that Brianna, Corey's mom, has been filing complaints after complaints and the bruising, all of that will come in. It will be a very heart-wrenching uh, victim impact statement uh, for Brianna and Corey's family as well. That's definitely going to come in as aggravating um, circumstances for him. And I have to add that what's interesting is the Google searches he, he did, he seems to know that he was going to get charged with murder. And here he was actually charged with murder one year after the death. He was out on bond first for the child endangerment. And then after one year, that's when they charged him with the murder. And he had no bond after that. So with the plea that was given to him, he rejected that and now he's facing a much harsher sentence. So Eric, what do you think about mitigation? What do you see, if anything? You know, that's a bit of an uphill battle here. Uh, I think what defense might try to focus on is uh, I'm not aware of any substantial criminal history for this person. And so that, that will be important to a judge. Um, additionally, uh, it's my understanding that there were marital issues, which can be emotionally distressing to a person, can cause them to act out of character. Uh, there were at least some searches that seemed to suggest that Mr. Greger may have had legitimate concern for his child's well-being and trying to find a medical location. Uh, but all of those are not really counterbalanced by uh, the aggravating factors here, as my colleague mentioned. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. We are waiting for that sentencing to begin. Uh, obviously, they didn't get my note about the scheduling. They're not quite ready yet. So what we're going to do is take a break. We're going to jump back into Young Thug. Always something going on there. And then we will get in live with that sentencing in the Gregor case as soon as it happens. Here we are coming right back.